Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. I'm hanging out with the guys from Papa Roach. How are you guys doing? Doing good. We've already talked off camera that you guys have reduced, not in tone, but reduced in overall, yep. I guess, footprint size and what you yeah. guys bring to the show. If you care, care to explain what is now your guys' rig. Um, well, basically, I mean, we both, before this, we both had uh, racks that were like bigger than this and we're carrying a lot of stuff and um, we had a bass tech and a guitar tech and uh, I think nowadays every band is a little bit more conscious you know like the, you know you make more money on tour by staying within a certain budget and the weight of everything and the freight and, and we I mean we tour the world so everything we try to bring just the most simple and effective setup now and we have one tech so we condense everything down to being in one rack Jerry's got the fractals if you want to talk about that. Jerry talk to me about your fractals maybe some types of the settings or the banks or the presets that you have in there that you have to adapt or create or you know manipulate to get what you create in the studio. Yeah I just you know I have a sort of a main tone that I that I like to have for live you know just to keep it simple um, you know I've used a bunch of different amps but you know they're all sort of within a certain range so I just you know I have one uh, amp that I use throughout the whole uh, the whole set and then that's for the main tone and then uh, I, you know I have different presets I, I'm, I'm actually on to wh where they have the scenes now so it's like I have you know just one preset for okay. each song but um, yeah it's you know it's all in one you know it takes a little bit of time on the front end but you know, now that everything's set, set. it's it's it. done, yeah. I know that for a time you used the EL34 power amps from Marshall. Do you still feel you get what you need from that old setup? It's uh, it's not 100%, obviously. It's, you know, it's more like 90, 95% of it. But but I do, have, um, I do have that Matrix power amp in there that runs to two cabinets that are on, on stage. They're not mic'd, but it's, you know, it's there to give me a little air. The, the trade-off that we have for the footprint and the ease of use and, and the portability, you know, it's it kind of outweighs a little bit of the, you know, the ultimate tone seeker kind of deal, you know. And do you have any effects or just everything's pre-programmed into the, or do you have any stomp boxes anywhere no, on the floor? No, it's, it's all in there. And then I have one expression pedal that I, you know, it's either a volume or a wah or uh, I have a, you know, for one of our songs, Hollywood Horror, it, it's a drive. It, it uh, increases the drive of the of the effect, or you know that kind of stuff. So, what can you tell me about Tobin about your SVT4 Pro that you're using currently? Um, Is it I something mean, you've had for a while yeah, with the Ampeg? I mean, it's very just simple setup. I mean, you can't really go wrong with the Ampeg stuff. I've had this for years, and of course, rule number one is have a backup. So, <laughs> the B5R is there just for backup, and it's smaller and compact. Um, and that's really it. I mean, I think at front of house, he's got three channels. He's got pre, post, a mic, you know, so. And we do our, our all our own switching. And uh, on stage, I, I just run a Maleco Industries uh, bass master or an ass master. That's what I like to call it. And it sounds great. And just that and like a, you know, tuner and a bass wall. When really you, really you keep you? it simple. Because I think the tone of the Lakeland basses that I play are really what translates, you know, out front of house, so. What do you use the the distortion or the, the Maleco on or in the wall, like what song specifically? Um, just whichever ones I feel like just need to have more of that driving kind of dirty uh, attack, you know, um, and then I try to recreate the sound of like a dirty synth too at times, so whichever ones just need that. Sometimes I'll just step on it when I'm feeling it, you know, it's like a mood thing. Before they get all moved away, you're just using yeah. this as standard 8x10? Yep, standard, standard 8x10s, uh, two of them. Okay. Um, two of them are on and two of them are not on, so. Jerry, you switched from the Marshall cabs, right? You And yeah. now you're using? I'm using Schecter cabinets, they just took them away. Uh, but yeah, I'm using Schecter cabinets, they sound great. You know, they're they're a little bit bigger than a, Marshall cabinet and so it's sort of like a, a mix between a Marshall and a boogie cabinet which s suits us perfectly so what about the speakers in that one uh, there's one one of them has 30s and then one of them has 75s why do you like the, the mixture of the two wadded speakers the, the the 30s are a little bit dirtier they're uh, they have a little bit more presence okay. uh, and then the 75s have a little bit more low-end um, 
so you know I, I can't do, I can't control them independently now but that's still you know the mixture of the two it's it's it sounds good on stage Lakeland 44 no, well this is actually a 44 I think they call it 90 or something or 4494 yeah. maybe 4494 and um, I just picked some different colors and and uh, I wasn't using all the EQ options uh, I just started actually running it passive because uh, sometimes when um, when you get into like really really hot sweaty shows i'll get a, a change in the tone the circuitry kind of gets so i just i'm having to make actually all new stuff i'm going passive but this was active and i just had a pickup selector because i keep everything really simple it's all about for me uh i control my tone by where i play if i want it to be subsonic sounding and low you know just to hum i'll play it really lightly up here and if i want to dig in i'll do that you know back here and uh, I just I just went with the black hardware. I mean, this is just a great company. Um, amazing sounding basses. It's just you could just take a DI and send it to the front of the house, and every sound guy is happy. So, what strings and uh, gauges are you using for your basses? Well, see now we uh, we've kind of we brought some of our songs down a half step live, um, just for like for the for it's easier for the singer, you know. So 50 to 120 because we tuned it down. So this is a C tuning. And uh, it's pretty low. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, and uh, but uh, but I mean, it doesn't. It feels good, you know. Sometimes it gets too big and taut and flubby, but it still cuts. Yeah. Well, and do you always use your fingers, or you use picks in certain I certain use situations? My fingers, yes, okay. yes. My fingers are tore up all the time. <laughs> this is a dumb question for a guitar player, but why why use the fingers versus a pick at yeah, certain times? How I learned how to play. Like traditionally, I just feel like I have more control and I'm connected to it, and I have a, uh, an aggressive style of playing um, over here that can sound just like a pick. And I mean, sometimes I do grab picks. I have them on my stand, and I'll grab them when I want to just, I mean, really, it's just a mood thing, you know? If I just feel like playing with a pick, I love pick players. I love the sound of a pick. I, I do it in the studio, but I'm just naturally a traditional finger player. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Tobin. Thank you, thank you. Jerry, it's one of your signature sectors. Yes, sir. Talk to me about the um, design on this. This uh, this is inspired uh, by Hot Rods. Um, I my other my other version of this is uh, black uh, with a candy apple red back. The reason I'm using this as my main is because we we're tuned down to drop C, okay. and this one is has been set up for that. Um, the other one is for the higher tuning. So uh, this one has the uh, you know the hot rod pinstripes. The other one has uh, spider webs. Um, and then I had I sent uh, sent these the two of them to a guy in Tennessee to design you know the this this thing and the it was kind of my trademark for a little while you know um, and to go along with the hot rod theme, but. Uh, it's a it's a solo six model, um, and we have. Is there anything you changed or asked specifically from the Schechter guys to change or yeah, well, adapt? Uh, not a lot of it, you know. It's just mainly this. Uh, we switched to this uh, bridge, this wraparound, um, and then the uh, the pickups are. This is a JB, uh, and this is a fifty nine. Um, and is there, do you play in any specific um, pickup selection over the other? Are you mainly in the bridge or the uh, neck? I'm, usually I'm on the bridge unless there, there's a few songs here and there where I'll switch to the middle position, but um, mostly on the bridge, yeah. Okay. And what about tuners? Yeah, we went to the Grovers. We had um, the locking tuner, Spurzel locking tuners, but uh, the our Bob, our tech, didn't, didn't like them. Uh, and because of the 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 action was too fast, okay. so uh, you know, I, gotta make I, him happy. Yeah, you got to make him happy. You got to make it easier on him because he's doing both of us now. So is the neck finished on the back of that? Is that neck finished or is that yeah. cloth? It's it's finished, but it's uh, it's not. It, it looks like it's not finished. Yeah. The other ones is exact same. You said just different graphics with the spider webs. Anything different? Yeah, on that it's, one? no. It, it's uh, the internals are pretty much the same. It's, it's interesting though because uh, they're made the same, same woods and everything, but they sound different. So I've had to uh, 
switch, uh, have different amps, okay. a different amp sound for the other guitar. Uh, I have for this one. I have a. It's the Brit Pre, which is modeled after the JMP One, uh, and that one sounds good for this guitar, but it sounds too brittle for the other one. So I had to I had to change it for the other guitar. So and the Tempest I saw on your boat is that those are just backups. Yep, backups. And strings and string gauges you're using for these? Uh, Dunlop. Um, I think this is a 13 to 54. Uh, I'm not I'm not, not quite sure, but um, for the heavier stuff, it's either 13 to 54 or 56. Gotcha. So. And picks? Is there a certain pick that you use or gauge that you're looking for? Uh, Dunlop. Uh, I'm using the. Uh, I think it's 88. I have you know I have my own picks, but uh, it's Tortex okay. 88. So yeah. Awesome, Jerry. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Walk us through your condensed rig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Chris Keys for from Weirguitar.com.